KF4DBK here with a video documenting uh, one of my latest finds on eBay. It's a Hewlett Packard 5245L electronic counter. And uh, as you can see here, it's agreeing quite significantly with my Electrotech uh, frequency counter, probably 1980s technology on that top one. But uh, this HP can do quite a bit, and it also came with the uh, 5262A time interval unit. Uh, it has a pulse generator and uh, a lot of things with it. Uh, I have the manual, and I'm just starting to get into it. So uh, hopefully in future videos uh, I can document some of the progress that I've had uh, unlocking some of those features in this plug-in. Because I've seen some of these frequency counters come with just a cover over this or just a big hole. Uh, lacking the plug-in, so I was lucky to get this at a low price um, with everything on it. So uh, below it is the HP signal generator you may have seen in some of my previous videos, or one of them. It's the Hewlett Packard 652A test oscillator, and um, I determined uh, that it was relatively stable for its age, and uh, and the dial was close to accurate but when you use it with a frequency counter like this or like this it doesn't really matter because you know what frequency you're on and it's very useful in the lab regardless so uh, this counter has another function uh, it can actually ca um, count zero crossings in real time and show it on the screen on this uh, Nixie tube display which is pretty neat um, see if I can demonstrate that for you before I do, I'm going to slow down to a speed that uh, can be actually seen uh, counting up easier. So let's try this. Let's go around to the back. Now, this unit has a lot of ports on the back. Unfortunately, I don't really have room to show you everything right up against my Kenwood. Uh, when you throw this toggle switch, you go out of uh, storage mode and into uh, real-time mode. Uh, they may call it something else in the manual. I haven't finished the manual yet. Um, just read enough to get started with some tests, but we've got two outputs here um, that can be uh, fed into a scope. Very useful in a lab. So let me go ahead and throw the switch and show you what I was going to show you. And now you can see it counting up. So it's actually measuring uh, and showing you the up, me measuring the period and showing you the output here, or either that or it's measuring zero crossings. Um, again, I'll have to reveal more when uh, I dig into it further, because I just re really received this today and uh, opened it up and started uh, messing with the basics. The time base right now is set for uh, one second. So if I change uh, frequency, if I change to one hundred hertz, now times one kilohertz. And I'm sure you can imagine uh, all sorts of uses for that. But for now, uh, we'll just, uh, oh yeah, this, this is kind of neat. You can contrast uh, the 20 hertz measurement here with uh, the actual 20 hertz counting. So frequency counter here in storage mode, frequency counter actually counting here. Something I've never seen myself until today. It was really dirty on the front panel when I got it, so the first thing I did was uh, quite a bit of cosmetic cleanup. But it, it's still got these uh, label maker tags on it. It was formerly uh, formerly belonged to the U.S. Air Force and uh, wound up in the surplus market. And this is a device from uh, the 1960s, but as you can see, it's still quite accurate. Let's go ahead and engage, re-engage storage mode once again. 
and here you can see about 20 hertz. We'll do an overview of the front of the unit one more time for any uh, HP test equipment uh, enthusiasts out there of the at least of the vintage variety. So that's it for now, but I'm sure I'll have uh, more for you later when this gets more interesting. 73.